I hope this short video finds you well. We've been in a series much of May on prayer. This really important topic that most Christians would say we should definitely uh, prioritize. And yet, shockingly, most people have not been taught how to pray. So this short video is meant to give you an example of how to pray using the Bible. Because it's important that when we read the, the verses of the Bible, whether it's from the Old Testament or the New Testament, that we can use them in a way that we can communicate with God so that we know that he's listening and we know that he's going to respond because he promises in his word in many places throughout the Bible that he will respond to our prayer. And so I want to take one of the most popular passages in the Bible and use that as an example today. So we're going to look at John 3:16 through verses 21. And these are the words of Jesus. This is what he says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Now what I want to do is give you this blueprint that I introduced a few Sundays ago during our Sunday worship. And the blueprint is P-R-A-Y just a simple acrostic uh, using the word pray. And so it starts with P. P stands for praise God. So in these short verses, there are several things that we can look at and be thankful to God for. And so I made a short list and they're here on the screen. They would go like this. Um, a short list would be God love the world. So we wanna say thank you for loving the world. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for giving us the gift of eternal life through your son. And there's several others, even in these short verses we could use. But when we go to God in prayer, we can say our heavenly father or dear Jesus or Lord, however we want to address him, and then start with things to be thankful for that we see within the verses that we just read. And so by using just a short list like that, we start out in a posture of gratitude posture of thanksgiving. And then we move on from there and go into R, recite his word. So there are several different phrases or even complete verses that we could recite back to God in our prayer. But I want to highlight verse 18 that said, whoever believes is not condemned. Right there, that's a promise. Whoever believes is not condemned. And so springing off of things to be grateful for, we can say uh, a parts of a verse, a phrase, or like I said, a whole verse, whoever believes is not condemned. So thank you for sending your son and thank you for the promise that through faith in your son, that all condemnation is removed because we believe that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation and he is the one who gives the gift of eternal life. And so by saying his word back, we're, we are claiming a promise right out of the passage of scripture that we just read in our prayers that can um, really resonate within us, not only in the time that we're praying, but throughout the rest of the day or into the night. And then A stands for ask for help. And so when I read these verses, there are several great things to celebrate and be thankful for. But there are also things in there that I just need to be honest that I need help with and you probably need help with too. So in these verses, it says that people love the darkness because their ways are wicked. Um, not to go too deep on this, but the Bible says that all of us do what's right within our own eyes. Apart from God, apart from grace, uh, we love things that are not pleasing to God. On our own, that's what we like to do. And the Old Testament and the New Testament reinforces this point. 
And so when we look at verse 19, it says, people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Um, we can say that and say, I need help because there is something within me that doesn't always long for things that are good. And so God, would you help me to have eyes fixed on things that are good for me, good according to your standard, good according to your ways. And then verse 21a says, but whoever does what is true comes to the light. Well, whoever does what is true is going to be people who are holding on to the words of God. See, in our prayers, we want to take his word and hold on to them, knowing that they are wise, they are true, and they're the way that we ought to see the world around us. That is the definition of wisdom, by seeing it through God's eyes. And so when we say uh, in our prayers, I need your help, I need to hold on to what is true, I need to do what is true, I can't do this on my own, I'm asking God to help me. And then I can add other prayers in there like, hey, I'm concerned about my job or I'm concerned about my health or I'm concerned about a family member or a friend or someone that I know is going through this difficult time. I can ask for his help in there and I should because he cares about the big things in our lives, but he also cares about the little things. And so we shouldn't discriminate one thing or another that we're praying to God. We can ask everything uh, before him. But we want to start making sure that we're praising God and being thankful for who he is and what he has promised for us. We want to recite his word because that really anchors our prayers in such a way that we are um, letting his will really and his word be what uh, gives us direction in our prayer. But then we also need to acknowledge that we need him. And then finally, why? Your will be done. Uh, Jesus, when he taught his disciples how to pray, he he um, really promoted the idea of asking the Father uh, to do his will, both in heaven and on earth. And so in our prayers, when we go through our asking and we go through our gratitude, by coming to a place, whether it's a shorter prayer or a longer prayer, by acknowledging your will be done, we want the fame of God to be made known on the earth. We want to make much of Jesus Christ because that's what the Bible does. It makes much of Christ. And so if we look at verse 21b, it says, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. When we ask for the help of God and then obey his word, we are acknowledging that we can't do it on our own and that he's working through us so that his ways are being known to those around. Because we don't want to make much of us, we want to make much of God. That's what the people of God do. And so when we pray this way, again, it's just an example, it's just a blueprint. No one has to pray this way. But by praying in such a way that we're using the Bible, um, it is something that renews and refines us from within and also uh, gives a lot of honor and worth to God, our Creator. And so I hope this has been an encouragement to, to you today as we learn to grow and mature in how we pray and how we obey the Word of God.